How can we get a rolling total for the last three months in SQL Server? Hello, I'm Philip Burton of filecats.co.uk. So here we've got a series of invoices and invoice amounts. What I would like to know is at any time, what is the last three months worth of sales? So if I'm in May, I would want May, April and March as sales. If I'm in February, I want February, January and December from the previous year's sales. Notice that I have got gaps in my data. I have got no January and I've got no July. So I can't use a partition function if I have got gaps. So I can't say I want to add up the last three rows if there are gaps. And additionally, we've also got more than one invoice per month. So let's see how we can make sense of all of this. Well, the first thing is I've got to get rid of all of these invoices where there is more than one invoice per month. Now, there are many different approaches to this. And the process I'm going to do is find out how many months since the first invoice have been for each of these. So the first question is, well, what is the first invoice? Well, it happens to be this December 2022, but I'm not going to hard code it. I'm not going to put that as a string or a date literal. What I'm going to do is use which function? The min function. So I'll select the min of invoice date from invoices. So that will get me 2022-1201. Next, I want to know the number of months since this date. That way I will have zero months from this date because it's the same date, two months, three months, four months, five months, and so forth. So for that, I'm going to use the date diff function. So date diff. You can say how many, and you can say what the how many is. So in this case, it's going to be how many months. If you haven't encountered the date diff function before, there are a lot of nuances with it. Have a look at the video, which you should have a link to, to find out more about it. So I need the number of months since 2022-1201 and the current invoice date. So this will be difference in months. So now we've got zero, two, three, four, exactly what we wanted. But hang on, I said I didn't want to hard code in the date. So what I'm going to do is take this select statement and put it in brackets. So now I have got this as a live figure. So if I change this down to say 2002 or 101 and run that, then we have got the first date being a live figure. Whereas if I'd kept it as a literal, then it would not have reacted to anything that changed. Now, next, I want the invoice date to be a month rather than a year, month, day. So I'm going to use another function. That function is going to be date from parts. So date from parts allows me to say a year, a month, and a day. So the year is going to be whatever year the invoice date is. The month is whatever month the invoice date is. And the date, I want the first day of the month. So as month. Now, I'm not going to actually call it month because you can see it is in pink. It is a reserved word, so I'm going to say start of month. So let's have a look at this. And again, if you need help with date from parts, have a look at my video. There should be a link to that from there. So now I've got the start of the month. I've got the invoice amount. What I need now is to be able to say, for each of these, give me the last three months. So you can see that the number of months, the number of rows that we've got for each of these is going to continually change. Now, the next thing I want to do is eliminate all of these different February invoices. I just want to total the invoice amount. Now, because we're using formulas, it's going to get a bit complicated. So I'm going to make sure it's not complicated. I'm going to put this in a CTE. 
a common table expression. So this is my invoices one. And to create a CTE, all I do is say with, this is my query name as, and put this in brackets. This creates a temporary query just for this one particular query. So now I can say afterwards, select star from invoices one. It just makes my life a lot easier. Because now I don't need to worry about how all of these columns are created. I just need to worry about the actual column. So I can now say, give me the difference in months, give me the start of month, and give me the invoice amount. So now I've got that. I can now say sum the invoice amount. So I can call this the invoice amount total. But what do I need to do now? A group by. I need to group by anything which is not aggregated. Right, so next I want to be able to say, okay, for this one particular line, I want the total of rows four, three, and two. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this as another CTE. So this is invoices two. Notice I don't have to say as twice. And now I can just say select star from invoices two. So what I want is a grand total for months four, three, and two, for instance, for this one particular line. So let's see if we can just work it out as is. So that would be where difference in months between two and four. So those are the lines. And then I can say sum the invoice amount total as a rolling total or rolling free month total. Notice I do have to highlight all of the CTEs as part of the select statement when I execute it. So that gives me nine. And then for the next month, I say between three and five. So how can we do this as part of our select statement? So I'm just going to put this in a comment at the moment and this as a comment. So we can just have a look at where we are. So I want all of these fields so far, the start, start of month, the difference in months, and the invoice total amount. I can get rid of some of the fields later for so wish, or columns. Then I want to sum the invoice total amount. Outside of the brackets, that is when we do the as, and I need a select as well, and a from. So that will give me a grand total. So if I execute that, you can see that is the grand total. That is the total of everything. Now I need to restrict it. So I will say where the difference in months for each individual line here is between the difference in months in the outer expression, minus two, and the difference in months in the outer expression, minus zero. But trouble is we've now got two things called invoices two one in the outer expression and one in the inner expression. So I'm going to call this inner invoices and I'm going to call this outer invoices. So where the inner invoices, difference in months, is between the outer invoices, difference in months, minus two, and the outer invoices, difference in months, without the minus two. So let's have a look and see what we've got. So for December, we've got just the one invoice. For February, we've got two invoices together add up to two, plus 
the one from December, so that gives three. In March, we have got these two, remember there isn't a January, so that equals five. April, we've got these three, so that equals nine. May, we've got these three, that equals 12. June, we've got these three, that equals 15. And August, we've just got these two, which equal 14. So what I can do now is get rid of anything that I don't want. So I'm just going to comment these two columns out. And here is my final answer. So this is how you can create a three month running total. Now let's just have a look at a different strategy because there are multiple ways of doing the same thing. So here we've got a different way of doing it. So we've got a CTE here. So let's just run this CTE. And this is the great thing about CTEs. You can run them like this. So what I've done is I've created another column called year month. And what I have used is I've multiplied the year by 12 and the month added it together to create year month. So what I've done then is joined it to itself. And on the on expression, I have used exactly the same thing that I've got here, just in a different way. So I have said where the current month is at least equal to this second table and where it is less than or equal to that second table year month plus two. So this column year month, that gives me the number of months since something very early, probably the year zero. So for each of these, I then have a look at, okay, where are we in relation to the last three months and add them together. So here I've used a self join and I've used a non equal, more technically known as a non equi join to say, okay, for each of these individual items, give me all of the rows which are in the range that I want. Again, we we'll need to have a group by and we need to have an order by. So I previously didn't run it with the order by. So if you don't, be very careful, you might not get the answer you expected in terms of the positioning of the rows. So we had this 2022 row all the way at the bottom. So these are two different ways of approaching the same thing. Either we use functions like date diff and date from parts to say, okay, how many months are we from an initial date? Or we do a calculation, get the number of months per year, add it to the number of months. And then we can either do a correlated query to give me the answer, or we can do a self join with non equi join. Now there's just one thing you might be saying about this. Okay, this looks a very complicated, but I sort of understand where it all comes from. But we haven't got all of the months that I might want. I haven't got for instance, a January 2023. I haven't got a July 2023. We need a list of all of the months, even if they're not in the original data. So please join me in next week's video, where we find out how to create a complete list of dates. Well, I hope that you enjoyed this practice activity. If you did, why not like the video, subscribe to my YouTube channel and click that bell so that you can be notified of more videos when they come out. If you want more practice activities, please click the link on your screen. Or why not join me in my Udemy courses, where you can learn about TSQL, database administration, SSRS, SSAS, SSIS, and more. There are full details in the description to this video or on my website, filecats.co.uk. Thank you very much for watching this and keep learning.